Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to Extra Time Technically, but also a transfer special. I said at the end of last night's show that with the players returning to pre-season, things should start heating up and, uh, and start moving at some pace. Obviously, today they've delivered. We've got a, a new signing to talk about, Greg Lee, on a free transfer. We have the Papa John's group stages that have been drawn uh, and everything else in between. Welcome one, welcome all. Your chance to have your say live and unfiltered. Whichever uh, opinion, whether it be the, the, the more popular one in the, in the chat or, or, or whatever, it's your opinion, have it and we will uh, allow you to say it unfiltered and live on the platform. As all new signings, there's, of course, a mixed reaction. So I'm going to go straight to the source. We've got Dave Salmon joining us very shortly. He is the comms. So he's seen him play home and away. He knows his stuff and he knows, hopefully, what type of player maybe we can come to expect to see in new signing, Greg Lee, who we, we expect to compete for the left wing back position. As you saw, Lewis Robertson on the show tonight. He's going to be hurt. His boy, Matt Penny, he's facing competition but let's be honest he's he's facing the exit door at, at this moment in time particularly as reports do suggest there may well be another left wing back to still uh, come in the chat is very very busy and andy barrel in nice and early in mckenna we trust if he thinks he's fit so that's good enough for me whereas herphy just to demonstrate exactly what i was saying about the signings a little underwhelmed if i'm honest probably down to my ignorance of not knowing who he is however in k mac we trust well hopefully we can uh, you know, join up some of those dots a little bit and fill you in a little bit more. Here is Dave Salmon to join us. Dave, welcome. How are you, my friend? Hiya, Martin. How you doing, mate? Thanks for having me back on. No, absolutely. Our pleasure. When, uh, when I saw the news that we'd signed one of your old boys, I thought, who best than the man who sees them home and away, commentates on them home and away, to give us, uh, you know, the lowdown on what we can expect from Greg Lee, our potential new left wing back, Dave. I think overall, Martin, I think you've got a very good player, to be honest. Um, I think if you're an Ipswich Town supporter and you look at a signing uh, like Greg Lee and you look at the fact that Morecambe conceded nearly 90 goals in League One last season, uh, he's not really played too much due to a couple of injuries in the couple of seasons before that, you think, oh, mm, that's a bit of a nothing signing, isn't it? But I think the reality is, if it wasn't for Cole Stockton's goals for, for us last season he probably would have been our player of the season. I think he's undoubtedly wow. one of the best left-backs in, in, in the division. And to get him for free, I think it's a really, really good piece of business. And it is going to be a huge loss for Morecambe. We knew probably a couple of weeks before the end of the season that he wasn't going to sign another contract. Uh, but he's still going to be a huge, a huge gap to fill. The reality from us is that he signed under the previous manager, Stephen Robinson, who then left us in February to go to St Mirren. Mm -hmm. And Derek Adams is a much more defensive-minded manager. He likes his defenders to defend, whereas Stephen Robinson likes his fullbacks in particular to bomb forward. So his ideal for you is a massive loss for us. Uh, so a little bit disingenuous when I see some some reports, you know, that he was released by Morgan. Was there a contract offered then? Was it, was it a player that you, you, you would have liked to have kept in the building? No, I think supporters would definitely have liked to have kept him. There's no doubt about that. I think there's a, a probably a minority who thought that perhaps he didn't turn up in big games, went missing. And of course, he played a lot of games in League One and we shipped a heck of a lot of goals. I think 89 goals we conceded last season. And of course, if you see stats like that, then you think, well, hmm, that's a bit of a nothing signing, isn't it? So for me... He's a huge loss, but he's not a Derek Adams kind of defender. Um, he's now gone to, he's signed to what I would call out and out defensive left backs. So he wouldn't have really fitted into his plans for next season anyway. So we didn't offer him a contract. I think if we'd have offered him one, he was going to go regardless. And okay. I think in terms of his career move, it, it, it's definitely a step up. Absolutely. Well, I would like to, certain, to certainly think so. So uh, more of a tactical change is the reason why he became available. You've gone for a more limited, in you know, respects, left-sided players that perhaps, you know, more traditional, as yes, we absolutely. will remember growing up, left-backs to be. Mm. Whereas Greg Lee's not that traditional left-wing back. He's, he's more of a left-wing back that's going to go over the halfway line and, and really impact the final third. Is that fair? I think, I think if you look at his heat map, uh, it, it suggests that he he's... He tends to sit back. However, 
that doesn't tell the story. Um, I think he had to do a lot more defending than perhaps we anticipated throughout the course of the season because purely because of the amount of shots we had against us. And But he does like to bomb on. Um, it, it, I think he fits your mould pretty well, actually. If you're going to be playing a back three and wing backs, whether he'll be first choice or not, I suppose you, you'll wait and see how, how the rest of the summer develops. But if he starts the season, you won't have any problems with him at all. He's very quick. I wouldn't say he's an out-and-out speed merchant by any means, but he's quick enough. Uh, he's very physically strong. He's brilliant in the air. He doesn't lose much in the air at all, which for a fullback, I think is a is a great strength. He's a good crosser of the ball. And uh, he's very, very fit as well. When he came to us, he had injury problems, which is why we only signed him on a one-year deal because we weren't sure of his fitness. He's gone on to play the best part of 50 games this season or last season. And that included um, for Jamaica. I think there was one occasion where he... He played for Jamaica in the early hours of the Thursday morning UK time. He then flew back, didn't get back till Friday afternoon. He then played the full 90 minutes on the Saturday for us. So, wow. I think okay. from, a fit, yeah, from a fitness point of view, I don't think you've got any problems there. And he certainly, I think he's, he fits a Kieran McKenna team far better than a Derek Adams team. And I suppose you pay a couple of quid a month more than we could afford as well, which obviously helps. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, absolutely helps. But um, one thing we've heard across the, the whole summer, really, from, from from Ashton McKenna and the rest of the team is profile, play profile. We're after a certain profile of player, you know, athletic, good with the ball, tech, tactically sound. But it's, he certainly sounds like the athletic department. Mm. He he fits the profile of of the way these this this management brain trusted for a better word wants to go in in, in their player recruitment. I think he does. Uh, he's a good age. He's twenty-eight. Yeah. Um, so I suppose he's at the he's at the peak of his career it's, in terms of his move. It's a now or never kind of move, isn't it? I suppose. And from that point of view, he's, he's going to tip the the way that you play, and the way that Morecambe probably will play next season. That they, they are going to be chalk and cheese. There's there's no yeah. there's no doubt about that. Um, I think fitness wise, you've got no problems. You'll lose him for probably seven or eight games of the season with international courts. Looking at the schedule, I think Jamaica have got quite a few games coming up in various competitions in the next year or so. Yep. He's a full Jamaican international. He play he either starts or he comes off the bench every time they play. So uh, you've got yourself a player, I think, Martin. I think I think Ipswich fans will be pleasantly surprised. He'll do a lot more than oh we signed somebody from a relegation threatened team that shipped 90 goals in league one last season. Mm, he's, absolutely. He's a far better player than that. And that's something I've seen, you know, dipping in and out all day on social media. And in fact, in the, in the live chat we've got, you know, even, you know, James comes in and says, sorry to say, disappointed with the signing, really the best we can get. Whereas Chris says the recruitment team will run the rule over him and decided he fits. And Mark has said that McKenna has the final say. So he's obviously ticked all the boxes. You know as well as I do, Dave, player signing is always a bit <laughs> like Marmite. You know, you, you always get the people that say, we love it, we trust the brain yeah. trust, um, and those that are, are, are a little bit fearful. But for those that, you know, like James, maybe joining us a little bit just after you started, just give us a couple of his strengths, uh, a couple of his weaknesses. And then the final question after that would be, is he good enough to be a first team player, all things considered, as the squad stands right now? You saw us twice last year at the yeah. very least. You know the some of the issues we had, particularly on our left side. So yeah, that, that that's the, the package to end in end, I suppose. He's very fit. Uh he's very physically strong. He's dominant, he's very aerially very dominant. He won't lose it much in the air at all. He'll bomb up and down the wing all day long. He's not an out and out speed merchant, but he's quick enough. Um, that those are his strengths. Good crosser will attack, 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 no problem at all. Um, perhaps not in the general what, what you call a traditional mode of a left back in terms of last ditch tackles, body on the line. He's not that kind of defender at all. He's, he's not an old fashioned style defender. He's very much a modern bombing on fullback for, for, in that regard. I suppose if you play a back three, it doesn't matter so much in, in, in that mm. regard. Um, Fitness wise, you won't have any problems. I say last season he played the best part of 50 games, jetted off all around the world with Jamaica. Um, I think he only missed a couple of, I think he had a, a two week or might be three week. He had a very slight thigh strain, I think it was, but only kept him out for a couple of weeks. That was the extent of his injuries last wow. season. So you, you're going to have a very, very fit player on your hands. Whether he is in your first 11 come the 30th of July, I think if he is, if I was an Ipswich fan, 
on paper, I would be disappointed. And I think, yes, okay, if you look at the cold, hard stats on, on paper, then perhaps you would be and you think you could aim a bit higher than that. I think the reality is you've got a really, really good player on your hands. Um, I like it. I like it. And and, and that's 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 the reality of it. I, th- I think he'll give everything for you for the cause. And I think he's still got something, a little bit of something to prove, Martin, as well. Um, I'm not saying he thought he was too good for Morecambe or anything like that. I, I think he has got a bit, a little bit of a swagger about him, let's just say. But uh, mm-hmm. I think at the same time, he has got a little bit of something to prove. And uh, I think on his day he would be arguably bottom end of the championship quality of the left back. But if he has an off day, you'll think he's non-league. I think it's one of those kind of things. I think he'll have more good days than bad days. I think if he starts the season for you, and I hope he starts the season for you because I hope that all Morecambe, former Morecambe players go on to bigger mm. and better things, then uh, I, I don't think uh, you'll have too much to worry about. Love it. Of course, you you, you want that except for, you know, twice through the, 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 the next season. That, look, Honestly, I love discussing football with you every time uh, we get together. Looking forward to seeing how the new season pans out. And I, honestly, you've, you've made my day. But I'm in championship quality on his day. Hopefully, yeah, absolutely. We'll, have a lot, absolutely. we'll have a lot of days next year, hopefully. Just don't look at the stats. Um, Ipswich fans watching this right now, don't look at the stats. Don't look how many goals Morecambe conceded last season because it doesn't tell anywhere near the story about how, how good a player is. The majority of goals that Morecambe conceded last season uh, were individual errors through the middle of the park and set pieces. Um, he, he was, he was, he would have been our player of the season if it wasn't for Cole Stockton's goals. It's as simple as that. Well, talking of Cole Stockton, um, you can keep uh, your hands off him, Martin. I tell you that much. Well, well just while you're here, we are, you know, always as football fans, particularly looking for a striker. Uh, were rumours in January, of course. Um, would he be good enough to make the step up the same way you're talking about Greg Lee here? It, yeah, it is... Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, again, is Cole's one of those plays that if you look at his career record, you would think, oh, he's not really done very much and didn't really have a great scoring record, even with Morecambe. I think in our promotion season two years ago, I think he got 14 goals in the league in League Two. It's, it's okay. It's nothing to write home about. But everything last season just clicked. And it wasn't a fluke. He's got fitter. He's got more muscular. And every single element of his game just went up a notch. And it had to because, with respect, we had some players who, that's just, well, the, stat, the stats and the results don't lie, do they? We, had, you know, we, no. didn't have, we didn't have a good enough team. We stayed up by the skin of our teeth. Um, and he had to pull his weight. Without his goals, we would have been sunk without traces, no doubt about that. But it's not a flash in the pan. He's a great player. He's only got a year left on his contract, though, Martin. So, well, can he if, ask he, if he does move, then somebody's going to get a, a bargain, I would say. Which, well, well, what sort of bargain? You know, I don't, I don't know we're sort of diverging here, but, you know, I, I like players that score goals. And Callie asked, would Morgan take Joe Piggott and Cash? Um, It's Morgan with an A. Cali, first of all, so sorry about that. But um, <laughs> um, you've been told, King. <laughs> um, I I think if he if he was to go, you're probably looking. I don't know. Probably half a million, maybe would would, would gain something. Like that. It. Yeah. Someone raid my piggy bank, right? We'll make <laughs> it happen. I, I, also, I we spoke about him. I know a couple. But of I times hope he stays. I, my, my my hunch. My, I mean, I, I have no inside knowledge about it. So I, all, all I do know is that there is a contract extension on the table. And I would imagine it would be as generous as the football club can possibly make it because we are going to need his goals next season. There is no question about that. Uh, but again, if he goes, he's like Greg Lee's 28. So if he moves now, it's kind of a now or never move for him, I think. He's at the peak of his powers. And let's say he was an Ipswich player. I really hope he never becomes one. But if he was, then, uh, yeah, you've got one hell of a striker, as you know from the two games from last season. Oh, we, uh, yeah. And, and the remainder of, of the of the campaign. Indeed. Dave, I love it. Appreciate you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We're nearly there. Only six more weeks to go. I, I'm counting down the days, Martin. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know about you, but on Saturdays, I am absolutely climbing the walls at the moment. I'm ticking off the days to pre-season and I just yeah. can't wait. I was. I found a really good TV series and I'm like, I don't want it to win. Yeah, though. but Netflix can only get you so far, I think. 
that's true. That's very true. Dave, I love you. <laughs> look after yourself, man. We'll speak very soon. All the best, Martin. Speak to you soon, Look mate. after yourself. I look forward to seeing Dave next year when we take uh, a couple of points. Let's bring in the contributors. First of all, it's George Nunn. George, welcome. How are you? All right. I'm good. You know, Dave's just blown my mind, uh, spelling Morgan with an A. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to have to go and change all the graphics that I made because I'm an idiot. Apologies to all Morgan fans for the last two seasons because I don't think that even crossed my mind to check it. Well, I, I certainly got through my filter if it did. Um, I just made a note to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, look, he blew. I think he blew a few minds with a, with a few comments. While you recover, I'll get a couple of ones in the in in the chat. Uh, Trevor says, "Let's give him a chance. We have to trust McKenna on this. It's him who will be judged on the signings." Uh, Glenn, they obviously sign him based on something they they think he can offer. It's a very mixed reaction. Obviously, Dave's given us the insight, having seen him home, you know, home and away every game last season. Yep. What are your thoughts on before we bring in the rap star? Um, I, I, I kind of agree with, with both halves of the chat, <clears throat> to be honest. Um, I, I think, uh, and what, like you, I think I was pleasantly surprised by what Dave said. But um, by and large, my gut instinct is that he's come in as the as the kind of backup left wing back um i think uh, we've talked about this before i think as a, as an 18 as a squad i think we're more than 18 now because with seven yep. uh, i think as an 18 we were probably five or six players short i think i said towards the end of the season as a starting 11 my gut is closer to three or four um the three main ones being left wing back uh attacking midfielder and striker and i don't think we've got any of those three might through the door yet so I would be very surprised if if we don't sign another another wing back. I think I, I don't want to don't want to spoil Lewis's uh, intro, and I'm sure we'll we'll talk about this. But I, I think I've said before I like Matt Penny as a footballer. I'm just not entirely sure at the moment where his position is, um, and maybe he might have just not been knocked down the pecking order slightly. But I do still like him as a footballer, and if he goes out on loan or sticks around to, to try and find his place and great. But I think my, my gut instinct, as I say, is, is that Greg Lee's coming in as, as, as a the really new number good, two, good quality backup left wing back. It certainly sounds, but, but by the sounds of it, it fits that, that profile, mm. that player profile mold that we've heard so much about, particularly on, on this platform with Ashton himself being on here yep. only a month or so ago. Yeah. And I thought he spoke really well, actually, you know, did a, I think it was a, Close to eight minutes his interview on the on the club website, yeah. and I thought he, he came well, across really well. City trained George. Yeah, they all, yeah, they he came, you know, he was, young age up there, not they? And, and I think I thought he described himself. I was quite surprised actually by some of what Dave said, just because he, he he seemed to describe himself as much more defensive than 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 Dave was probably um, giving him credit for. giving him credit for, and 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 he almost he was almost hesitant about talking about his own technical ability, um, but I think. Humble, you know, it sounds sounds great. Yeah, it sounded sounded particularly modest about himself. So, and that probably does fit the mold of the kind of character that that we're after. So, yeah, fair fair play. Seems like a great signing, but I, yeah, I'd be very surprised. Um, no, I'd be I'd be moderately surprised if um, if he is the kind of left wing back to 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 Take mirror Burns on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, to, 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 to take, take that shirt forward, uh, as it were. I mean, you know, it's, uh, the thing is, it's a free transfer yep. from Morecambe. Now, you can see where people, you know, and I, 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 I'm i on record for both, A, not following football in-depthly outside of Portman Road, and secondly, I haven't got the, I haven't got the time, pal, but secondly, <laughs> for saying a left-back is not the reason why you get promoted or not get promoted. I'm on record to say that, and I have to, I have to stick by that. I, I do honestly, genuinely believe that. However, for a free transfer, have we got worse than Dominic Thompson? Because from what I'm hearing from Dave, we ain't got worse than Dominic Thompson here. So for, for not spending a single penny, yeah, we're at so least I, I think that was like for like. I was, I was thinking exactly the same earlier, actually. Which is, if you'd said to me we've signed Dominic Thompson, I wouldn't have been particularly disappointed. I wouldn't have expected him to be the left wing back for the reasons that we've talked about before, which is that he, he. Yeah. He seemed he struck me as the left back that we've been looking for for a long time, but we don't we don't play that football anymore. So he probably came to the club two or three seasons too late in terms of coming back coming in as a traditional left back. And and I don't doubt that he could have been moulded into more of a left wing back, but that makes him not a starting left wing back. So it, from from what Dave was saying, 
it, it sounds like Gregory is probably a, a step up in terms of being a more naturally suited left wing back. He's 28, is he? Yes, 28. Exactly. Yeah. He's born in September, so he's nearly 29. So it's not like he's the future of our left wing back position, position. probably, but who knows? I, I think he seems like a really good option and I wouldn't be disappointed if we start the season with him based on what they've said. Um, but I would be surprised if we're not looking for someone else. Better options or, or alternative options. Stephen Parry, better is the wrong word. Don't be too sure. I think he's here, he's here in case the main left wing back falls through and we need one sh- so he sh- he may start. Mike D, Penny for Lewis's thoughts. That's coming up, my friend. <laughs> Elliot Leader, Greg Fitz, the general profile required for the role. We are obviously looking to fill what's not to like. We are in League One, guys, and McKenna had given us no reason to doubt him. I'm going to park the McKenna sentence. And I'm going to ask both you and anybody else comes on the show tonight, because uh, we've got a lot of new viewers on the back of the subscriber mm-hmm. giveaway on the, off the back of Mark Ashton. If you've never been here before and you've got something to say, the live chat is there for you to use. Or as Jeremy has just highlighted, l- just put a link in the chat and a link will appear for you to click and to come on and have your say. As I can see, two people are already waiting to do so in our wonderful VIP area. You don't get anything in the VIP area. It's, it's so, it's VIP very lonely area. in the VIP area. <laughs> very lonely. Yes, it's a, it's, it's a very small booth in in a, in a broom cupboard. Um, but um, but yes, do do come on and have and have your say. But I'm going to ask you all through the evening. I suppose is this McKenna line of in McKenna we trust because I'm I'm a bit like an elephant. I've got a long memory. I can remember sitting in this chair only 12 months ago, and the words were, "If Cook wants him." That's good enough for me. If in Cook we tr- and that turns sour quicker than my milk left out all day on a twenty-five degree heat day. So I I always get a little bit trepidatious. Big word on a Monday night when I see the words. If McKenna wants him, I'm happy. In McKenna we trust. I think the difference is that we've seen enough of McKenna's football to to know that he's you know somebody that that we can trust from a. From a playing perspective, personally, and it is very personally, I'm, if trust is the right word, I never really trusted what I saw of Paul Cook's football. It wasn't particularly for me. I didn't think it really suited us. It didn't really suit, that. Didn't, <laughs> didn't really suit okay. the players that we brought in last summer, which was weird, given that increasingly we're told that he was responsible for them. I, I, you know, I, I, I didn't, again, tr- I'm not sure trust is the right word. I, I didn't really trust him that you much on as Ipswich Town Manager. I didn't buy into his philosophy, let's put it Ooh, that way. Now we are getting into the David Brent <laughs> workplace um, arena environment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, look, I, I've, I've seen enough of the way that it looks like McKenna wants to play football and heard enough of the way he talks about playing football um, uh, to, to trust him more than Paul Cook already. And, and I trust, and, and similarly with, with Ashton <clears throat> as well, I think I'm perfectly happy to trust the types of player that, that they're going to bring in. And and to be fair, probably would have trusted the types of player that Paul Cook brought in last year. But you, it's it's easy to lose trust, isn't it? It's not you don't have to keep it forever. Just because we some of us we all said that we trusted the players that Paul Cook brought in last summer. Arguably, we had good reason to. But you don't have to you don't have to maintain that trust. Can we just talk about your long memory, by the way? Because I've just noticed that this background is um is the old one. No, no, hold well on. <laughs> it was on here. It was on here. I started the show with it. I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did. I don't know what happened there. I actually made a point of it tonight, thinking George is on the show. Tonight. George is on the show. I better make. Sure I don't I'm spend all of my spare time making these things. <laughs> no, I, I fully appreciate that. Absolutely appreciate that. I did mean to. I do apologise. I'm I don't know if I'm only like... winding you up. I don't know if I like the away shirts. If you were going to sit there with red shirts as well, oh, it's really like, growing on me that away shirt. I'm almost regretting buying the hunt shirt. Let's see what the rap star. Is. Lewis rap star Robertson. Yeah, that will be with will be with will be with will be with The man who's turned a technical issue into his name, rap star Lewis Robertson. We love you, Lewis. How are you? Yeah, evening. Um, hoping to have less technical issues tonight, but uh, yeah, good to be here. Time. It's all part of the fun. Do not worry. That away shirt, very quickly. Is it growing on you yet? Or, or, or are you always a convert? Or are you still very much? Yeah, no, I'm all right. Thanks. Um, I just wish the, the stripes on the away shirt were uh, 
consistent across. I don't think <laughs> yeah, that's not interesting. one for people with OCD, is it? Yes, thank you. <laughs> but at least the badge, I think you pointed it out the other day, at least the badge sits in the right place. Okay. Rather than having on all the, the sizes, badge, though, because it's over to the side. Yeah, what George means is for the people like me who are going to have to get, well, I ain't going to tell you what I'm going to have to get because I've let you guess. But yeah, does it fit in all the sizes? That's that's the question. <laughs> that's the question. Lewis, great. Before we bring in some some people, that you've heard what George has said. You've heard what Dave said. You've seen the, the chat. You've been on social media. Carl Brooks says any free transfer is a win for me. If it doesn't turn out great and we've not wasted any of the budget, it also leaves more cash in the pot to buy a 10 and a striker. What are your thoughts on Greg Lee? Fourth best left back, according to Stephen Parry in the chat on, on stats. Yeah, I saw that earlier. Someone posted. I, I don't know what that was based on, how they were, were ranked. And I, I'll be honest, I just saw a tweet that got recycled several times. So I don't know what the criteria was. But um, no, I, I think it's, from the sounds of it, a good bit of business. I'm not going to make out like I know loads about him. Mm -hmm. Don't recall the Morecambe away game, but obviously a fair few people, I think, Rich uh, messaged earlier and said he remembers um, him sort of marking Wes Burns out of the game away to Morecambe. Um, so, yeah, and, and, and from what we heard from Dave, all positive. So mm -hmm. I think it's a, a shrewd bit of business. Someone who has experience of playing abroad as well. I know from his club interview, he sort of alluded to the fact it didn't quite work out when he went over to Holland, but he developed as, as a person. And, and we've talked about that with our own players and certain loans and going off and, and developing. So, um, no, I think it's a shrewd bit of business and um, clearly got something to add. So uh, I'm not going to pass judgment and, until we've had a proper opportunity to take a look at him play. But, um, yeah, welcome yeah, addition. I, I, I know you're not going to pass judgment, but it would be amiss of me to, to say or, or, or at least question you on this because, obviously, we've, I've just asked George about Dominic Thompson. Now, he's not here anymore. He was the, the incumbent starting left back. That left the door wide open for your for your player, Matt Penny, to step forth and, and take it by the horns. He still well could do that. Or is his days numbered at Portman Road? You know, you're a big Matt Penny fan. So as Mike D asked earlier, Penny for your thoughts. Well, I picked up a bit of a tan as his agent. I've just got back from Madrid, so I'm trying to negotiate a deal for him. What with no, Rayo? Um, I um, when I first saw it, I, I looked at it and thought, well, that's a backup. I think Stuart Watson's story alluded to the fact we're going to bring in, or well, we're looking at others in that particular position. So my first thought was, well, that's that's the end of Matt Penny. He'll be moving on. And um, I was having to think about it on the way back from work, and I wonder. It's a bit of a theory that I want to throw out there. Haven't seen anything about this. But if we think about the uh, EFL rule change regarding substitutes, McKenna places a lot on his wing backs, And I think we do as well. In that particular system that we were playing, there's a lot of expectation on the wing backs. Now, with the change to the uh, EFL rule about subs and being able to use five substitutes, I yeah. just wonder if he might look at, OK, got Wes Burns, for example, on the right. We're going to have a new left wing back on the left. I'm going to play high intensity, get the ball out wide for 60 minutes, 65 minutes. And then he's in a luxury position where he can actually change both wing backs, which we couldn't do when we could only make three subs. You're not going to make three subs and, and probably change both wing backs. But now we've got that luxury of you can actually, like I say, change the wing backs, which then made me start to think, OK, well, let's have a look at the wing backs we've currently got. We've got Lee and we've got Penny on the left with potentially another probably higher profile left wing back to come in. And then if you look on the right, we've got KVY, we've got Wes Burns, and he's also, it's been muted about Edwards being looked at there. And he quite likes having wing backs on the side of their dominant foot. So I know a lot of people have said about KVY playing mm. on the left, but KVY is right footed. We didn't see KVY play on the left under McKenna. We only saw it under McGreal. So I just wonder if we're looking at potentially two players for each position. But when it comes to the wing backs, because of the emphasis and, and the kind of high impact position and, and the number of games we play, he might just be looking at three. Now, I know people are going to say, oh, well, that's Lewis trying to keep Matt Penny at the football club. But I just wondered if, you know, given those kind of circumstances, that could be a theory that could be taken into consideration of high impact hour, make the change, 
and kind of rotate between three or, or certainly have one stronger player and then another two competing as backup, particularly if Lee's going to be away, um, away on international duty, as Dave alluded to. So just a little theory to throw out there. I've said that and then probably tomorrow Matt Penny would have left the club and, and I'll look like I don't know what I'm talking about, not for the first time, but it could be considered. And I think the fact that we've got the three potentially for the right wing back role suggests that could be a possibility. George? Thoughts for the conspiracy um, theory? <laughs> conspiracy. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with having three for for a position like like the left wing back role. And, and I think did did Lee say as well that he he can play on the left of a three, or did someone else say that? Yes, so no, I, said I, it, think, yeah. I think he's yeah, yeah. pretty versatile as well. And, and I, I just think you know why not? I think like like I've said, like I'm I'm on Matt Penny's side. I. I I don't see any reason or, or rush to get rid of him. I can't imagine that he's costing us a huge load of money. He's still only 24. There's something about him. I, I think, you know, keeping him in and around the squad. And, and like you say, Lewis, I think given the the import that we put on our wing backs, and hopefully we'll put be able to put on both sides, um, and, and with the subs coming, there's no reason to think that we won't be keeping three in each position especially if they are versatile enough like they all are really at the moment to to yeah. play on either side or in multiple positions you know we've seen burns play on the left for wales over the last few weeks we know that kvy can play on the left because he did it a lot of culture um and and if greg lee can play um in, in as either a, a more traditional left back if if we change formation or play on the left of a three in a pinch then yeah, why not? They all sound like you know, just all feel like really good quality squad players, uh, and I think yeah. why not? Why not? I'm all in. That interchangeable aspect, I I, I guess, is, is something that Kenneth was, you know, keen on last year, trying to rotate it often. I, yeah, I'm not saying you're completely wrong there, Lewis, with what you were you were alluding to. Uh, but you never know with football, you know. It could could Norman be on the, on the right path with, you know, could Lee uh, be an international be significant? Having three gives us the option to postpone games during international f- fixtures could be key. Um, could be a, a a reason. I I don't know. You know everything I, I guess is in, is in play with football. I I didn't hear anything though, lads. Before I bring in Josh to have his to have his say on what he thinks of the transfer, I didn't hear anything, Lewis that. Was negative. I, I like there wasn't a oh, you know, he, he's all right, but he's not this, he's not that. Some signing, you know, some transfer shows we do, the player's almost written off before he's you know got, got the boots on. Um, it seemed like he was getting one of the best players in that position within within the division, yeah. And and he's proved his fitness as well. You know, he went to Absolutely. Morgan, he had a bad injury, that's why he only signed a one year deal, and it's it's kind of bitten them yeah. in the foot, hasn't it? Because if they'd you know, with foresight, seeing that he'd be able to play the way he did last year, they would have offered him longer than a year contract. Unfortunately, you know, well, I say unfortunately, he played his part, he's kept them in the league and he's moved on. And it sounds as though it was kind of a case of, as, as Dave alluded to, they didn't offer him a contract. There was a change in manager and a change in style, but he was probably likely to move on anyway. So it kind of, it's a year that suited both parties. He's got his career back on track and Morecambe stayed in the league. So, mm-hmm. You know, good luck to them, and and hopefully we can profit from that. I wasn't aware, George, that he he almost well, not almost did by the sounds of it bet on himself last year. He said, "I'll take a one year, you know, I'll do a one year deal. I bet on myself being so good that I can go on to better things or sign a better contract here or whatever." I love a player that can bet on himself. He's paid off for him. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it seems like a, a guy that's like really confident, like to go, like he said, to go to Holland, and it's not something that everyone. Uh, does in is willing to do in football just to, to get a game and and I think yeah he came across really well and and as Lewis says ha- signing that one year contract worked for for both of them maybe not in the long run in terms of Morecambe's you know not not being able to keep him for for an extra year or or more but that you know, they're they're not playing on the same budget as as Dave alluded to they're not not in the same or tactically. in terms of being able to and, and we can offer players and to be honest two year contract for a, for a 28 year old 27 year old is not massive amount massive amounts and and from Ipswich's perspective he's probably still got a little bit to do to prove that he can stay fit for more than one season 
Mm -hmm. um, and it is relatively low risk for us, I suspect. And, and that's one of the good things about being in League One, right, is that we can we can look at the, the fourth, fifth best left back in the league and, and pick them up if they're on a free. Um, I, I think, as I say, we're probably just looking higher than that for our first 11. Uh, yeah, we can agree uh, as well. Yeah. We've, we've proven this summer that players will be rewarded. So if he comes in, has a really good season next year, yeah. we'll offer him a contract. We'll offer yeah. him a longer contract, possibly improve that contract because he's he's earned it. You know, there's that incentive now that maybe there wasn't always when, when we kept having that influx of players running down their contracts and leaving for free. What we've seen this summer is players will be rewarded for form. With Wolfie, JD got a contract before the end of the season. You know, I know there's a bit of debate about Caden Jackson, but McKenna's seen something. He's offered him a deal, you know. It, yeah. it's kind of a good position for, for Lee and for the club in that, you know, if it doesn't work out, we're not stuck with him on a really long deal. You know, let's say mm -hmm. this time next year, he, he hasn't hit the ground as we hope he will. You know, we've got him for one more year, potentially look at a loan and, and, and that's the end of his town career. But there's such a potential here for players to be rewarded for good form. And that's a big incentive, I think. And players will come seeing that as well. Yep, yeah. particularly because exactly what you just said, which is that he'll back himself. He's willing to back himself for a year at Morecambe. So I imagine they probably said to him, so back yourself here, back yourself here, play yourself into a better contract, play yourself into an extra year, whatever it might be. And, you know, you can be our left wing back for, you know, you'll be right up there with the chance of being our starting left wing back. As things stand, you are pretty much our yeah. starting left wing back. So we're a club. Yep. As, ours, as big as ours, that's going to be a huge incentive, you know. To get, we are the best ticket, if you like, or getting himself back to the levels he, I'm sure he firmly believes he he, he should be should be playing at. Josh, what do you make of the signing? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know that much about him, um, to be honest. But uh, listen, if he works out, he works out. If he doesn't, he doesn't. But I don't think people should be negative about it because you don't know him as much, do you? People going, oh, it's free transfer from Walkham, blah, blah, blah. Listen, good enough for McKenna, then we've just got to trust it and let the process take its course. Absolutely. Josh, I'm going to ask you to come just come back in if you can, because your line's not particularly great. I'm getting a lot of sort of uh, crackling on, on the line. So just re-enter and hopefully we can we can sort that out. While, while Josh is sorting him, himself out there, one thing that stuck out to me, Lewis, was when Dave said, you know, it's... They put, the club probably wouldn't have liked to have kept him, but that's because we're going in a tactically a different direction. This is not a, you know, to, to pluck a name from the past, a Giles Coke situation where the club are going in a different direction because of ability, if you like. This is definitely a... Morecambe have changed their tactical approach at left-back. It doesn't fit anymore. It's not about how good he is or isn't. It just doesn't fit the, the system. There's no point keeping him. And this is a problem you get when you change managers, isn't it? You know, we changed managers halfway through last season and with that came a new style. Not necessarily a bad thing and we all hope it's going to work out. I think it will. But Morecambe, Morecambe were in the same position. They changed manager. You know, uh, Dave alluded to it that, you know, uh, I think it was Robinson before. He rated him. He, he was playing him. And then Derek, uh, Derek Adams returned and, and it's a change of style. And we've seen that, you know, look at some of the players that have moved on who, you know, Scott Fraser being a perfect example, he came in, he wasn't as technically good as Scott Fraser is. And I genuinely believe he is technically very good. He's not that athletic player that McKenna looks for. And if you look at some of the signings we've made this summer, ball, you know, solid, strong, you know, physical, um, that the big strength of Lee from what we can gather is his physical attributes. You know, he's strong in the air, good in the tackle. He's quick, quick at running with the ball. You know, these are, these are all physical attributes that at times, yeah. and we've talked about this, we've been bullied in league one and, you know, they might not be the glamorous names on paper, but actually these are league one hardened players. And if you think back to Arsene Wenger's Arsenal, the unbeatables, God, could they play football? But they could also mix it when they needed to with players like Sol Campbell, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony Adams, Vieira. And I'm not comparing us to the invincible Arsenals, but it is being able to batten down the hatches and dig in and have that fight. And I think at times too much emphasis was placed on Sammy Morsi last year. It's good to have other physical players alongside that. So, yeah, Morecambe's loss is our game, but it's another physical player to put into the mix. 
Absolutely. Do you think that was the? Is, do you think that's the major reason, Josh, to bring you back in? Why people are, are maybe a little bit sour on social media about about the potential of this deal? Because because it, it looks on the on, on you know on the front of it, a left back released by Morecambe, free transfer. The Marcus Evans uh, troll in the back of your head starts going, ah, it's free transfer. It's a it's a release player, ah, ah, and you start getting those little fears. Is that a reason you think? I don't know. I th- just because he's released doesn't mean he's a bad player, though. You know, it could be because Morecambe, he's not part of Morecambe's plans. They want to go somewhere else with it. Uh, I can see why they're doing it and why our fans are sceptical, but being released is not always meaning the player's a bad player. Absolutely, yeah. Spot on the money there. Lots of people in the chat uh, are sort of following Norman's trend of thought here. Still really want us to make that marquee sign that fires us up even more next season. Somebody else put in the chat. I can't remember who it was, so I do apologise. Is this, are we sort of getting the free transfers in because we're going to go big on a striker? Do you see that being the case? Do you think, George, you think we're sort of being more more, more frugal with, with with how we bring players in because we're going to go big on that one player, be it a Burr Sanson, be it a Scott Twine, be it a striker, whatever? Or do you think actually that's not how we're going this year at all? It's hard to tell. Uh, I'd like to... I it is. Know. I'm asking you for the opinion. <laughs> Uh, maybe, yeah. I'd uh, I don't mind it if if that's the way we're going, then I don't mind it. Um, if we can spend big on a striker and that striker bags twenty plus goals, then it's the right move to make. If it goes wrong, then they've learnt them from their mistakes, haven't they? Is it the right move to make though, George? If that's because that, you know, there's some serious chat about maybe that being the policy. I'm not sure that I'd read too much into it about us being more frugal. I think probably more into us being slightly less just wantonly signing everyone that we can see um uh, you know not in terms of being frugal with money but but just signing players who we see value and quality in um and i don't mean financial value necessarily but i think being more clever with the dashboard um and and signing the players that we think are going to actually make an impact on on the goals that we have for this season coming. I think I agree to a point, but I don't think it will just be for a marquee striker. Like, as I say, I think if, if there's going to be more, if, if, if there are going to be, if there's going to be money spent, I suspect it will be on a striker and not necessarily fees, but, but wages, if any, as much as anything, a striker an attacking midfielder and, and, a, and, a, and a left wing back. I, st- I still think we'll, we'll be in for, um, another one and, and potentially someone that, that is either it could even be free but just from a higher league with with you know a, a better pedigree with you know the sunny you know, aluka these com- coming from man city so um a ways back um but you know what i mean i think yeah that that kind of thing and yeah exactly a sunny aluka like there were a few eyebrows raised and eyeballs rolled when when we signed sunny aluka but i don't think anyone body would would begrudge giving him some credit for some of the performances that he put in last last season uh, um yeah, and truth of the matter is that five years ago or whatever it was he cost seven and a half million pounds which is you know, yeah i just wanted an excuse really go <laughs> Best turn I think I've ever seen, ever. And I wasn't even there. Um, Josh, <laughs> before I let you go and bring somebody else in, my man, where, where, if you're Mark Ashton with the dashboard, you've finally got to grips with it. You know, he's, not, he's, he's gotten rid of Cortana. <laughs> We've all done that rookie mistake when buying a new laptop or something. Got Cortana and like, what the fuck is this? He deleted it. He's finally got to grips with the dashboard. If you are Mark Ashton, Josh, where are you going next? Left wing back, as George is sort of saying, attacking midfielder, striker. What's what's the, what's the priority for you? You get a position, a position we haven't got yet. So for me, attack. Jesus Christ! I don't know about anybody else, but you need to blow him away there, Josh. You've gone from bad mic to microphone that's, that's perforated my eardrums. Let's try that again with my finger on the button of mutage. Josh, speak. Attack with her. Right? No, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. Josh, we love you, man. You listen to that back, you'll realize what I'm saying. Lewis, before I bring in Jeremy Lowe, where are you going? I would be surprised if we don't spend some money and, and spend 
decent money on on the player that's needed. I think the line's always been, you know, the money is there for the right player, and and I think that that rings true. So I'll be looking at the forward areas. Goals were an issue, and and I think for a goal scorer, that's going to cost money. Um, but at the same time, I, I think players that are out of contract, it's easier to do a deal to a certain degree, you know, in terms of it removes having to liaise directly with a club. Yes, it's beneficial for the player and, and they can then negotiate their own terms. But I think with the three signings we've made already, they're, they're good, solid signings. But I think I'd be looking at that kind of X fact signing that, you know, is going to excite people. I've, I've personally, the three signings we've made excite me, but I know they don't excite everybody. So um, I think we we'll spend money. I think we we'll spend good money. X Factor. Tell you what, back in 07, 08, that was a prime show. That was peak TV viewership. That was proper peak TV viewership. Um, good theme tune, too. Tim Roy. Uh, uh, no, sorry, Tom White. Um, on the subject of dashboard, I think it's worth note that new philosophy is based around statistics. That doesn't mean getting it right at the time, but on balance most of the time. Chris Boyd, uh, the bulk of the signings come very late in the window last year. And Ashton said how complicated it was. We have three in, patience may be virtue now. Uh, and Tom again, love it, Tom, two in a row. Not seen the name once, now I've seen it twice. Love it. Uh, last season, we had to sign a whole new team. I'm not going to get all of those right, which we didn't. He didn't say that, I did. If we can get a good chance of the new ones right as well, we keep improving. Um, yeah, I like it. I appreciate it. Cadden from Forest Green says, Neil, well, Forest Green Rovers fan will be joining us on Wednesday's show. He was scheduled to be here with us tonight. But when the news broke about the signing, I knew I knew what sort of show we'd be in for. So I pushed him to Wednesday and we're going to get the Forest Green Rovers insight. And maybe we can ask him about Cadden, Neil. So be around on Wednesday. Jeremy, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, go. I read in the chat you've got sunburn. Yes. Just Gob... shocking. Uh, uh, shocking, Jeremy. Shocking, Jeremy. Get the old factor fifty uh, on, mate. Uh, you know, you know when I had that uh, barbecue. Very well done, by the way. You raised some good funds there for a good yeah. cause. So you know, once again, and I know I've said it probably once again. Uh, congratulations on that. that. Standing in that sun in front of the barbecue, and the sun beating down. Ne- ne- next minute, my arms were all red. Well, you got to be careful. Look, Jeremy, I've been I've, I've only been burnt once in the last probably three years, and that was in Felix, though, of all places. I was there for uh, Jubilee weekend on a Saturday or a Sunday for the music concert on the beach. It wasn't even sunny, and I got roy- royally sunburnt. It's that wind, Jeremy, the old Felix, though, sea breeze. You've got to watch oh, it. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I remember one time... Um... I was I was in in France with my parents, and I went went swimming in the sea. And I thought, oh, well, I won't bother to dry myself off. I'll let the sun dry me off. Bad mistake. Rookie error, Jeremy. And if you just tuned in, t- t- welcome to Talking Sun Cream, a brand new show from HDR Media. We are ple- we, we we do it all on this platform. No jokes aside, Jeremy, where do you want to go with it, my friend? You've got. You've got the new sign-in. You've got what's next. You've got the, you've got the new kits. We've not heard from you for a while. So you have what you want to say. Where, where are you going first, Jez? Well, uh, I'm glad we got another left back. Be, be, it, be, it, by a, be, it, be it by a free free transfer. But, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, but they, all, you know, they all count. They all count. They do. And when you think of that Arsenal Invincibles team, let's be honest, we all think of Nigel Winterburn first, don't we? We don't think about anybody else. It's always Nigel Winterburn. You know, when you think about the Man United treble winning side, arguably England's greatest ever side in the last 50 years, you think of Dennis Irwin, Lewis. (laughs) You don't think of Ryan Giggs or Beckham or Scholes. It's always Dennis Irwin, right? I was always a Paul Parker fan myself. Who? <laughs> I'm playing with you. I'm playing with you. I, I just want to see the reaction. I'm playing. Um, Jez, before I ask you to come back in on there, George, I mentioned the shirts. Mm-hmm. I can't resist it. 
Mm. We've just recently relaunched our, our merch site. I know you've really collaborated with me on that. I, I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. And I'm underplaying the collaboration in the sense of how, <laughs> <laughs> how much of an you in- login so I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> how much of an imbalance that was. Less collaboration yeah. and more <laughs> meat is cheerleading. It's but, a team it. Yeah. It is. But you're not a fan of Planet Blue. Have I got that right? No. No, I don't know. That's not. <laughs> I no. I was in terms of the website. I was frustrated the other day with the with the website. I made it pretty clear on um, angry social media. Uh, yeah, I, I it, silly thing, but you know, I think um, there's there's zero excuse for a website to go down because a few people want to buy a football shirt. Like that's ridiculous. Like, and even more people than we would expect as a League One football club. That's ridiculous. Yeah, having worked in digital for twenty years, like you, you make sure that your website can handle a few people trying to use it. Like <laughs> that frustrated me, but only from a professional so the more, and experience your perspective. So I, I, I love Planet Blue. I love everyone involved in Planet Blue. But good God, they need to sort that website out because that was a shambles. That was a shambles. It was. Yeah. I mean, I, I clicked it at the start of a show we were live on. And it, I still hadn't got to the start of the, the end of the queue by the end, by the time we finished the show. It was then a good 15, 20 minutes and I was closing down the computer and I had this open tab and I was like, I don't remember, I don't remember clicking on that and just closed it down, not realising I was first in the queue. I was finally right to the front and I, I fucking closed the thing down. But it, yeah. that's a shambles, isn't it? I, mean, that whole I know, power. it absolutely was. I, I'm all for the, the, the waiting list thing, if that's, if that's the way it needs to be done. But I, got, I, I waited for five minutes to get from 600 to, to the into the actual website and then had all manner of errors popping up um, and was in the checkout eventually, but still couldn't get through it with errors and then got kicked out back to number 800 in the queue and had to sit and wait again. And like, it was just a, there's really no other word for it. It was a shambles. I, I'm agree. sure they will fix it and I'm sure that they're aware of it and I'm not. It's just, there's just really no excuse for it. I'm sorry, but there's not. Talking of not aware of it, uh, Lewis, I'm not aware of this question. I think it's July, but Kieran Baines asked, does anyone know when, we, when you get the new shirt on pre-order when it get, when it will get delivered? End of the month. Um, I think they said end of next, or middle of next month, 20th-ish, something like that, I think. Did they? Am I making Lewis, that I, think, I think the away shirt's towards the beginning of the season, isn't it? And I think mm. that... Is the pre-order for the home shirt not first week in July or something like that? Oh, is it that soon? It goes wow. on general sale, I think, something like the 10th of July. So okay. it must be delivered to people before then. There you go. There you go. Hope, hopefully you answered the, the, the question there. Benjamin Michael spent all the money on the Hollywood videos for a new fucking shirt and didn't have any left for an IT technician. Like it's not, I, I suspect very much like I follow, we are probably tied into some stupid legacy <laughs> agreement for some crappy e-commerce website that everyone is desperate to get rid of. So it's, you know, I suspect it is <laughs> given, given the importance that, that the Americans as a people, not our specific Americans put on merchandise sales. I would be amazed if we don't have plans for something better than That's our current me. online. Offering. That's dig with me. I've got this with, vision. Uh, with the release dates, um, Callie makes a fair point. I know Callie's been doing a countdown, hasn't he on his Twitter <laughs> for, uh, how long until the shirts are released, fixtures are released, home games and friendlies. And yeah, so uh, if you want to know the exact dates, keep following Callie for a regular daily countdown to what day things are happening. I've, uh, I've just, I can't stop laughing. I've got this vision of Alan Sugar in front of our PR team. You had a video to announce a video and you had nobody running the website. What on earth is this shambles? Oh, oh, Brentis style, love it, absolutely. Go, love it. Gov. Gov. go on, go on. Can, can you remember ten years ago, this season, who Ipswich beat in the what? What is now the Papa John's Trophy? No, not the Papa John's. Uh, the Caribou Cup. In in the semi final. Jez, I spent the first 10 minutes of today's show panicking that Morecambe weren't in our league. I, I ain't remember 10 years ago, mate. Is that the Arsenal <laughs> well, game, well put, it, put it this way. The game before it, we, we were trounced 7-0. By Chelsea. Oh, by God. Chelsea. 
Oh God, I remember that dark, dark days of the Roy Keane start. No, was it? Yeah, the end of the Roy Keane start of the Paul Jewell era. That's yeah, yeah. Colin Healy was he hooked after ten minutes towards the end of that? No, that was Paul Jewell. T- Thomas Priskin. Yeah, yeah. Thomas Colin, Priskin uh, scored Colin for Ipswich in a one nil win over the mighty Arsenal. Yeah. Mighty being the operative word with Deja Ru or Deja Ru at, at, at the back with, uh, you know, most of their second string. Unfortunately, who's the, who's we did, the manager that um, night? Unfortunately, we didn't it? win the return leg either. Wasn't it Tony Hume? Wasn't he the no, first? It was Ian McParlin? Yeah, McParlin. That's yeah. It. He, he was the manager the pitch, for the match. They, they did. Look at that, look. I can't remember if Morecambe are in our league, but I can certainly remember the name of the caretaker manager that beat Arsenal. Um, yeah, yeah. there we go. Uh, you got, you're getting Drinnen on your shirt, Gov, says Norman Greenwald. I ain't wasting 50 quid to put Dr- Hang on, Drinnen. Is it, is it per letter, George? What do you owe money to charity for because he scored so many goals last season? I don't remember putting any money to Harry Value on the situation. <laughs> I, don't, I distinctly don't remember anything about. Well, no, I, I do. That. That, was, that was a ten. That was a ten. <laughs> I, I owe you some money. I'll, I'll bet. Um, I like. I like the new backdrop, Gov. Well, that's all down to George. That is Jeremy. He's the vision. I'm just the mouth. <laughs> I'll talk the shit, and he makes it look good. That's the deal. Um, basically, you know, with help from the rap star down there, of course. Jeremy, I've got Colin coming in very shortly. Before I go, what's next for you? Is it the third strip, or is it more important we get a striker in? I'd say get a striker in. We got we got at least two, possibly three, if you count Piggott. But you don't, we don't know how long we're going to keep Piggott for, if or if if he, we're keeping him, or if he's going to go out on loan, or or someone come in with a crazy offer for him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jeremy, we we love you. We appreciate you. You make sure that fifth slap the, you slap that f- back to fifty on, son. All right. Yeah. Don't want you what, burning. What are you drinking, uh, Lewis? Uh, Forza Paolo. Uh, away day ones, Jeremy. Very look nice. at this. This is seamless because we are partnered with Away Day Beers. Beautiful beer for the beautiful game. Sorry, Joe, I want to move you off because I, I want to see the advert. Awaydaybeers.com. Uh, beautiful beers for the beautiful game. Go there. Get your packs. Become a subscriber. Lewis, you are, you're one of their monthly subscribers, aren't you? Yes, yeah, really good. Really enjoyed it. It seems to come just some getting short and uh, just in time for the barbecue. But I do make sure I wear the suntan lotion. You, you've got to make sure you slap that, fifth, that factor 50 Especially on the sun. The old, yeah, yeah, the old reflection noggin. Um, George, I, I'm not going to ask you if you're a subscriber, but Way Day Beers, just finely crafted beer with absolute love from an Ipswich Town fan. So you're ticking all the boxes here. Absolutely, yeah, I love it. I gen- and genuinely, I do. I, I'm not a subscriber. I, I, I'll be honest, I don't subscribe. I don't drink enough beer, I don't think, to, to subscribe to it, although Monday nights would probably have people believe <laughs> otherwise. Um, but yeah, I, I um, what I've tried a bit, I think I had one of the Ipswich boxes um, oh, a few yes. months ago, and yeah, I, I thought all of them were exceptionally good. We have not done an away day beer giveaway in a long time. I feel one coming on. I do I do a bit of summer beer, um, but you know, in you know, it's, it's great stuff, great beer. Love Josh to, to pieces. So if you are a, a beer fan, please do go check it out. Callie still needs a non alcoholic. I'm with you, Callie. Me and my pills don't mix with too much beer. I wouldn't be able to do the subscription like 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 Lewis. I don't drink a, a, enough. Well, I'm not. I, I, I'll rephrase that. I can drink enough. I'm just not able to drink enough. Goldfish was the nickname, but I need non-alcoholic one. I love the old non-alcoholics, even though you feel like the ciders, man. Let's talk about that for a second. The non-alcoholic ciders you get. It's just sparkly apple juice. What's the point of a non-alcoholic cider? I don't get. I don't get that, Lewis. It's just apple juice with a bit of fizz. What are we doing? I'm not a um, I'm not a cider drinker. I never have been. So, um, but I've I, I feel similar about um, non-alcoholic gin. It's like there's there's nothing to it. It's like why bother if it's non-alcoholic? I mean, it comes down to per- personal preference, I know. But uh, yeah, with regards to the beer, if Matt Penny moves on, I'm, I mean, I've got the dark room for it. God, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. 
I keep waiting for you to go to an ad so I can put a line on. But um, yeah, if Matt Penny, I haven't got any ads. In dark room, more <laughs> you're looking more and more like you're in uh, the uh, Bo Rap video. Yep. <laughs> Garamouche. Like fisherman, fisherman by the lake. I'll get a little torch. <laughs> Garamouche. Right. The people want it. The people are demanding it. It is the goat. He needs an intro theme. It's the goat. How are you, Colin? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, fine. Um, yeah. Good evening, George. Good evening, Lewis. Oh, I just got. Good evening, fella. <laughs> he's Lewis, putting his light on. He's putting his light on. He's he's, he's going to put um a four pound fifty in, in in the electricity bill, uh, and put his light on. Evening, Lewis. Lewis, Lewis, that has just cost you a fiver in today's money. <laughs> I know. That's a big stop mistake, that subscription mate. to the way they bid. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Never do that, Colin. I want to talk to you about first of all the cobbled stand, the iconic legendary greatest stand in English football it's getting a clean Colin they're cleaning the baby up and it's on the shirt <laughs> well that's why from a, per- from a person in what was it 71 72 that saw that great stand as you call it built um, it's not Don't before have... time Gov, for, the, it's for not the first before. point about that it's not before time. Um, I can remember it when it was a lovely, bright, spanking new, lovely, beautiful stand, actually. First cantilever stand in Europe, that was, when it was built. Um, and the centre spot restaurant it was at the time was absolutely lovely. Loads of people used to go in there and have a lovely meal. Yeah, fantastic old stand, really. But... Um, um, Gavin the Championship, Gavin the Premier League, and you'll be sitting in the new stand, Gav. Could well be. Could well be. She is old, bless her. Let's she hope is, so. you know, on her, on her last legs. But the kit is fantastically magnificent because it's apparently got the cobbles now. I didn't realise that, George, until you said it. Thank you for pointing it out to me. Uh, but she is... I did feel a bit sorry for her. when you know, like All those pictures, you could just see the grime in the background. I just thought... If could have chosen a better location, like because it just didn't look good. But I bring the cobble stand up as a segue, really, because from 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 the the greatest of heights to the pizza trophy, the, it has been drawn. We do know at least two out of our three of Colin's rolling his eyes. Um, Colin, you're not a fan of the pizza trophy. Well, it will be if it's not if it if it turns out to be Northampton away. So I ain't done six fields. I've done the old county ground as I used to. They used to they used to play at the old county cricket ground. And this time of the season, it used to be a little bit of a so and so, or at the start of the football season, obviously. It used to be a bit of a so and so because it used to cross over with the end of the cricket season. Um but yeah, so I went there when they when they played there, but I haven't been to six fields. So I'm hoping that's gonna be an away fixture. But, That's exactly uh, what I said to Rich earlier after the draw had been made. I was like, I hope we get Northampton yeah. away because I've never been there. That's right. Uh, we'll get that one ticked off, mate. But, so um, we'll go together, yeah. Colin. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that. Friends. Love it. Just the two of us. <laughs> um, look, just to, just, to, just to fill those in at home, obviously, the Papa John's Trophy, Cambridge and Northampton um, are, are, are in our group alongside a Category 1 invited academy side of either... Arsenal, Villa, Brighton, Chelsea, Palace, Southampton, Tottenham, West Ham. You know, you know the drill by now. Sadly, we've been in it too long. We we're talking about it like this, George. Colin rolls his eyes, rightfully so. I'll, I'll back him up with that. But it, it could very well be a route back to Wembley, playing there for the first time, getting the good time feelings going. Because all these PR stunts only go so far. You do need a bit of success mixed in as well. Yep. Is it not just kind of a PR stunt in itself, though? I mean, I, I yes and no. I, I, I want to route back to the championship. I don't, I don't really care about a route back to Wembley particularly. You can have really both. Rodney, have got both. Day out. If we can have both, then great. But it's, it's, and I'd like us to take it seriously. Um, uh, as long as you know we're we've got the squad to do so, and I suspect we will. But I'm not. Fast either way, to be honest. It'd be a great day out, but it's not like it's going to add another star to the back of the shirt, is it? No, not fast either way. Colin, I want to get out of the group stages. I don't care if we go to Wembley. I'd love it, but I ain't bothered. 
I just want to get out of the group stage. At the very least, have a respectable exit. So far, we've not out, got out of the group stages, and it's just been an utterly embarrassment. And it's been it's been almost a, a, a poster child for just what we've been at this level, which is just under un, un, just rubbish. Yeah, true, Gov. I mean, the the only thing in in my opinion that's positive about that competition is the fact that it gives um, people like um, Corey um, and yeah, true. Maybe Matt Penny, if he's still there. And the likes, um, first, uh, you, you laugh, Lewis, but I mean, you know, I love Matt Penny to death, you know, but I mean, somebody is going to be that second second or third um, left wing back and the same on the other side, but KVY or whatever. And like I say, that, that competition, Lewis, uh, George and Gov, gives, you know, the slightly um, or the second kind of string of the first team football and um that's um that's something they desperately need really you know True. And at least it gives you know gives them a little bit of um competitive football yeah as opposed to under 23 stuff and whatever yeah so uh, that's how yeah. i see it gov you know uh we've got get crunching says hox best itk in the business hox i hope you're doing all right my friend i saw your tweet always here if you need a chat go on in what do you want i thought i'd come and say hello another signing in Brilliant. the door Another signing in the door, but Scott Twine has got lost on the A14 corridor. Yeah, but these signings take a long time, Martin. It just doesn't happen overnight, you know, these marquee signings. I see there's some um, Premier League teams chasing him today, Lewis. Scott Twine. I can't, I can't remember. I think West Ham, there's, there's a couple of teams in there for him. Uh, what's, your, what's your theory, anyway? You text me that theory about your left-backs. Have you already... Oh, he's I've already not been, been watching. Done I've already, no, I've already, already shared it. it. He's already shared it. Oh, he's done it. Back, Watch it back. Great content. Oh, well, you, won't, you, won't, you won't regret it. Great, great content. Um, <laughs> if I do say so myself. I always watch thoughts? back. I'm like some. Matt what's Phillips. Your thoughts, what's your thoughts, Rich, on um, the, new, the new signing? I, I remember him from Morecambe away. He had a decent game that day. And uh, Wes Burns, really qu- he kept him really quiet. Um, your theory, Martin, you've said it before, haven't you? When these players, um, he's Man City, the academy, you said before, haven't you, that when these players are signed, you know, when they have it on their CV... Yep, you'll you know, see it Yeah, you, you've said it. And he's obviously at Man City. He's had a few clubs. Yeah. But he's 27. I think he got two goals, four assists, which is um, better than some of our... Um, well, better than Sonia Luco, Colin. Yeah, can't disagree. Can't disagree. It's not um, but you'll, 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 last, you'll see... Rich, you'll see a difference on Sonny Aluka this year, mate. Since you well, let's hope I don't. I don't really want to see a lot of him, to be honest. I just hope he's a squad player. <laughs> if I'm honest, we should be relying, Colin. We should be relying on a 33, 34 year old to get us out of this league. He can play his part. He can play his yeah. part like everybody will. And I think there'll be another left back come in, Martin, left wing back. I think he's probably he's versatile. He can play both sides. He can play midfield. Uh, it's another free transfer. It's probably freeing up some money and wages for something bigger and better, I would think, coming. I'd, I'd be surprised, George, if we didn't spend a bit of money on the, an attacking midfielder or a striker. That's where I think we're going to be. You really haven't the watched the rest of the show, have you? No, <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> I will. Rich, we're, 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 you're, you're basically saying what I said. Yeah, I think I, think I did hear you right. moaning. I, 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 I did hear you moaning about, about the website, George. I was waiting for your little rant about the website. <laughs> I did see him up for it. He just, you know, you he wind me up. I'll rant about anything you like. Absolutely, uh, Rich. While you're here, um, giveaway. Update the people on on, on what is going. Well, the man on. up there, the man up there in the corner is going to give away a shirt. He is. I'm, I'm having to win it. Out, what, are, what. what is the okay. current number? We, we, we're about three... We are 3,653 subscribers. We are 347 so, away. So if anyone's watching tonight who isn't subscribed, 41% of our audience not subscribers. So there's probably some people watching this show tonight or it's going to watch it back. Please hit that button because there's season tickets to be given away on this platform. Hopefully there's going to be some season tickets for charity... Um, Lewis has given a shirt away. A guy called Joe Jones, he's given a shirt away. Listen, don't worry about any other platforms. This is where it's all at. So, Talk in Town, subscribe, YouTube, and get us the 4K by the 30th of July. 
You're about as subtle as a sledgehammer meeting a brick. Well, there you go. I'll do, live now, breaking news. Oh. I will give away a shirt to a subscriber if we get to 4K. And if Matt Penny is still here, 1st of September, I'll give away another shirt to a oh, subscriber. That's, well, that ain't fucking happening, is it? More times hitting 5K. <laughs> He's pretty safe there, really, I think. He really does. Oh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. If we sign Lionel Messi, I'll give all 11 shirts away. Hang on, can we just clarify, is, if he's away on loan somewhere, does that still count as him being here? No, if he's if he's still a registered ITFC player in the squad, come September, I'll give away another shirt. Registered, so not the Miles Kenlock treatment, where he's here but not registered. If he's still at the club. Oh, okay, cool. Even better. There you go. Yeah. Epic. All right. Well, he won't be, but we can we can all dream and believe. Um, all right, Crunch, we'll let you go and watch the rest of the show so you can get, get him. I'll see you and... Thursday morning. Don't be late, everybody. 9 a.m. with our fixtures show. Absolutely. We'll see you then. Hopefully, have a few more subscribers in the bank. Colin, go on. Go on. You were pointing. Which, well, go on. Yeah. I, I was just going to just gonna say that um, for the new lad who's just come in, um, you know, all of it, all the very best, my son, and I hope it really goes well for you. It's a great move for you. Um, you've come from really kind of nowhere to a very, very big club. And I hope, one, A, I hope you can handle it, which I'm sure you will be able to. Two, I hope you, you know, just show us, uh, you know, all of us, all us damn fans, exactly what you're all about because by the sounds of it and by the sounds of Dave earlier on the Morecambe fan um, I'm very much looking forward to seeing you and um, I think a lot of people could be very pleasantly surprised and you'll get my 100% support I always support the person in the blue shirt, blue shirt or, or in the green shirt in the goal I will always do that and always will so you'll get my full support, and I know you'll get the full support of nearly every town fan. There are silly people about who don't give people a chance and then not even put their boots on. And for me, that is inexcusable. You get my full Absolutely. support, son. Colin, that's a great point to, to say. Well done. I love it. Love the passion, as always. Hopefully see you Wednesday. We're doing a fixture show, a preview where we you know, talk about what oh, we want first day. We'll have when... Wednesday, I've got to take a load of children up um, to near Heathrow. So I, un I unfortunately you. won't be about. I'm, I'm going to near near um, near Heathrow with a load of kids on the bus. So, Good yeah. man. Even better. Look at that. Look, gentleman and scholar. Colin, look after yourself. We appreciate you. Elliot Leader coming through. If Ollie Hawkins makes the World Cup squad, he will give a shirt away. Elliot. You are the hero we didn't even know we needed, my friend. Thank you ever so much for that kindness. What a, what a gesture, gentlemen. You're speechless. <laughs> yes. Do that, Elliot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just end the show now. Wow. <laughs> right. To end the show, I've got a little, little game for you, right? Ipswich buses, they have called... They, they, every bus has got a name. So, for example, George Great or Gigantic George or... Why have they got him? Why am I... What... <laughs> Think of another G that describes George, you know, or goes with George. There's a word, I'm sure, but I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you an example, all right? I'm going to ask you two buses, if just buses have got, which, by the way, you can go contactless on all routes across Ipswich. Two pound twenty the fares start from for a return. Um, but I'll give you an example of a of a bus, just just so you, just so you know what you know what what they're what they're called. So you've got. Um, <laughs> the Nacton Nipper, for example, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's that gives you an, an indication of uh, of the buses, right? Are, we, are you with me? Yeah, please, please say you're with me first of all, because I don't, I, I'm, I'm sort of drowning here as it as it is. <laughs> um, but so, George, you've got Greenwich, but oh. what is the name of the bus? Greenwich. It's a bus to Greenwich. Um, I don't know. Um, absolutely no idea. I'm not Greyhound. The Greenwich Greyhound. Greyhound. It's yeah, essential to John yeah. Lewis via the University of Suffolk. I'm ashamed of myself. Yep. I would be ashamed of you too. Yep. Uh, yep. Lewis, you have got the Bixley. What? This was, this was a tough one. The Bixley 
Buzzer. Oh, he's mightily close. Bustlers. Bixley Bustlers. George Foxall. I don't know. Box. Come no, on. Oh, I was going to say Fox, but it's too obvious, right? It's not Fox. It's Fox or five. But you know, you know, five. We'll yeah, Fox or five is what it's called. Is yeah. any in a Blighton novel? I've got no idea. Joe, um, this, 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 we, we will work on this because I, I quite like this as a little segment because there's some great names <laughs> for these buses. I thought it was going to be like, is it a bus name or a you know? I don't know. Oh, I could do that. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's a better one. I like it. I like right. it a lot. But don't forget, you can go contactless on all routes across Ipswich from £2.20. Ipswich buses go places. This is what I'm going to level with you. This is what happens when the cost of living is the way it is. Because they, put, they have to put their prices up by 20p, which means my advertising material is all wrong. And I've been watching The Time Traveller's Wife and I've just been enjoying it too much to do a new advert. So I'm having to do this. But I don't regret a thing. Not one thing. Not one. And I've seen their running services all through the week when the trains are dead. Not that you'd get a train from one end of Ipswich to the other, but why not? You, you, you could get a but well, you could get a bus like from Felix, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you could get a bus from here to Ipswich and Ipswich to Felix, though. You could do anything, really. You could do anything you like. But Ipswich buses go contactless on all routes. Thank you for your company this afternoon, gentlemen, or this evening, rather. It's been a rather pleasant uh hour and 16 minutes with you both wasn't dave very good at the start of the show i do appreciate dave also coming on don't forget you can support us through ko-fi or become a youtube member these wonderful people have done so the person who designs the graphics has also helpfully told you how the person is a fifth standard via youtube or ko-fi status i'll i'll let you figure out the key for the uh, for the graphics i'm sure you can do it george any 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 clues on on the key well, it's just the logos of the, the two things, two platforms. That will do it. That will One, do one's it. the Ko-Fi logo, one's the YouTube logo. It doesn't, as Crunch was, oh, I'm sure, is already moaning about in the chat, um, it doesn't show the people who are supporters of both. And I'll no, it doesn't. It this. doesn't, because that's my fault, because I didn't give you the information. I didn't want to throw you under an Ipswich bus, but I will. Throw me under the Fox L5, son. Don't you worry. <laughs> All the old uh, Nacton Nipper. You can chuck me under it because I didn't do it. I should have done it. I didn't think people would mind. I just thought, you know, is Super Route 66 of those things? No, I appreciate anybody that gives anything. So I, it's my fault. I apologize. But please do follow the link. Subscribe for the giveaway. Shirt giveaway from Lewis. Ko-Fi support the platform. Um, but yeah, we're done. We're dusted. Back Wednesday, myself, Mike and Ben, I believe, are helping me preview some of the fixtures they want to see in the early part of the campaign best away day most looking forward to game all that sort of jazz but the season's nearly here we can feel it on the horizon but until wednesday he's the designer he's the rap star and i'm the gov good night you make me